In this video, I'm going to go over how you can set up group discussion boards and then also how you can view them and provide feedback on those. To get started, we'll be in the Assignments tab in the Notebook course, click Add, and choose Assignment. You fill out all of this top information as you would any other assignment, and where things change is under the Submissions area. After you fill out the general information at the top, you will choose Submission Type Discussion Board as you would for a regular class discussion board. And where it's different is under this Individual or Group option, you will choose Group because students will be in discussion boards only with those within their group. You can choose to allow late submission, anonymous posts, or editing and deleting of posts and comments. For my example here, I'm going to have the minimum number of posts one, and I am going to hide the posts from the students in the class until each of them has the minimum number. I will also do a required word count and a minimum number of comments with a required word count so we can see how that looks. What's new here is there is a group options area. So this will be the maximum number of students per group. I'm going to put three there actually and hit create. Now that the discussion board has been created, we, this is the view we see as the professor, you do have to manage the groups and get the groups set up before any of the students can post. So in this Manage Groups tab, you will see that no one is in a group yet. What you can do is you can add your groups. You can add many and you can create them that way. You can add one group at a time. If you have groups set up in your roster tab of the course, you can import those groups from the roster tab and select them and, and Nopal will pull all of those groups right in. Since I don't have those set up, I'm going to go ahead and click add group. And by default, it goes to group one. You can rename it if you want. You can add the members yourself or you can just create the groups by hitting that Add Group button. And then if you unlock them, which it did by default, we can see the groups are unlocked. Zero of two are locked, so that means all of them are unlocked. Students can self-select into the groups. To make this go a little faster, I'm going to move the students myself. And you can do that by choosing Group A, Group B from here. You can also view the members of the groups by clicking there to see who is in what group. And then that way it could potentially help you get all of those set up. Once your groups are set up, you'll see here you have no more ungrouped students. If the groups are unlocked and no submissions have been made, students will be able to move around. So if you want to make sure that students cannot move between groups, make sure you lock your groups. You can still edit them and remove and move the members around, but if the groups are unlocked, students can move themselves until there has been a submission made. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the discussion board here. In a regular class discussion board, you can participate along with your students and you can do that in the group one as well. Please note you have an additional drop down menu here and that's where you will select which group you're participating with. So if I want to post to group A, I can select them and if I want to post to group B, I can select them there as well. I'm going to pause for a moment and have my students make some submissions so we can take a closer look. So once students submit to the discussion board, this is what it's going to look like. Again, it looks a little bit different than a regular class discussion board because you have these groups. So the first thing to note is there is a filter down here. It shows post by and then you can choose group A and you can see just the group A discussion board or you can choose group B and see just the group B discussion board. This works very similar to the full class discussion board where you can go ahead and comment in here and this is participating along with the other students and everyone will see those comments. So 
Again, you can toggle between the two. If you want to grade and make individual comments based on their grades, you can click on that submissions tab again and go ahead and preview the submissions. Now I can see all of the comments and posts. We can toggle between them at the bottom. And over here, I can see that the word count was not met. So I see five or eight out of 15 for the post one word count. And I might mark down a bit for that. Let's do a grade. And I could add feedback and tell him why. And I can post the feedback there. You can still go from one student to the next. This student has not posted a comment on the other student's work yet so I can grade accordingly. I guess I'm grading kind of hard on this one. The same with this student. And this student did not meet word counts on either one. So my students were not really on top of it for this group discussion board post. Uh, once I have everything graded, I can go ahead and publish my grades. And again, just keeping in mind that students will be able to post and comment on the discussion board until the due date. So maybe I should have waited until the due date to actually grade them. But that's how you do the group discussion boards. In the next video, I will cover the individual discussion boards, which function a little bit more like journals. Mm -hmm.